Margaret Kennedy was an architect, but she wasn't just designing buildings. Her vision extended far beyond the physical structures she created. She was designing systems for a better world, systems that could sustain communities and foster collaboration. Born in Germany, Kennedy's early life was marked by curiosity and a relentless quest for knowledge. She possessed a deep desire to understand the world around her, immersing herself in books and the natural environment. This curiosity would eventually lead her to question the very foundations of our economic system, challenging the status quo. Little did she know her journey would challenge conventional wisdom and spark new ways of thinking. Her journey was an inspiration to all who dream of a fairer and more just world, showing that change is possible with dedication and vision. The year was 1980, a time of significant social and economic change. Margaret Kennedy, an accomplished architect, attended a lecture that would change her life forever. The speaker was a little-known economist, passionately discussing the hidden impacts of interest on the economy, a topic that was rarely addressed in mainstream discourse. Kennedy, with her architect's analytical mind, was captivated by the depth and implications of the subject she began to see striking parallels between the structures of buildings and the structures of financial systems, both requiring a solid foundation to support their weight. The lecture ignited a spark in her, a burning curiosity to delve deeper into this often overlooked aspect of our world and to understand its far-reaching consequences. As the economist spoke, Kennedy listened intently, her mind racing with questions and ideas. She absorbed the information like a sponge, eager to learn more about the mechanisms that governed financial systems. The lecturer explained how interest, while seemingly small, compounded over time to create vast sums of money, a concept that was both fascinating and alarming. This money, he argued, was siphoned off from the real economy, diverting resources away from productive uses. It flowed into the hands of a select few, exacerbating economic inequality and creating a divide between the wealthy and the rest of society. Kennedy realized the profound implications of this system, understanding that it was not just an economic issue, but a moral one as well. It was a system that rewarded those who already held wealth, allowing them to accumulate even more at the expense of others. Conversely, it penalized those who did not have wealth, trapping them in a cycle of debt and financial insecurity. It was a system that perpetuated inequality, creating a society where the gap between the rich and the poor continued to widen. This realization struck Kennedy to her core, challenging her to rethink her understanding of fairness and justice. She knew she had stumbled upon something profoundly important, something that could not be ignored. She couldn't ignore the injustice of it all, feeling a deep sense of responsibility to address these issues. The lecture ended, but Kennedy's journey was just beginning. She left that night with a newfound purpose and determination. She walked through the city, her mind buzzing with ideas and plans, knowing that she had to act on this newfound knowledge. She was determined to understand the intricacies of the financial system, dedicating herself to extensive research and study. More importantly, she wanted to find a way to make it fairer for everyone, believing that a just society was within reach. This pivotal moment marked the start of Kennedy's transformation from a respected architect to a groundbreaking economic thinker, a journey that would redefine her career and impact countless lives. She was an unlikely revolutionary, but her passion for justice was undeniable. Her work would go on to inspire many challenging the status quo and advocating for a fairer, more equitable world. Margaret Kennedy dove headfirst into the world of finance and economics. This was a world far removed from her architectural roots, yet she approached it with the same rigor and precision she brought to her design. She devoured books and academic papers. She sought out experts in the field. Kennedy spent countless hours poring over data, determined to unravel the complexities of the financial system. Her architectural training gave her a unique perspective. Kennedy could see the flaws in the system that others often missed. She recognized the inherent instability of a system built on debt and interest. Kennedy understood that this system was not designed to benefit everyone. She saw how it concentrated wealth in the hands of the few, leaving the majority struggling to make ends meet. Driven by her unwavering commitment to social justice, 
Kennedy embarked on a quest to expose these flaws. She refused to accept the status quo. Kennedy believed that a fairer, more equitable system was possible. She dedicated herself to finding and promoting alternative models. These models would prioritize the well-being of people and the planet. Undeterred by the complexity of the subject matter, Kennedy persevered. She possessed an unyielding belief in the power of knowledge. She knew that by understanding the system, she could help others to do the same. Empowering people with this knowledge was the first step towards creating meaningful change. It was a step towards building a more just and sustainable world. Margaret Kennedy's research led her to a startling conclusion. Money itself was an illusion. She delved deep into the history and mechanics of money, uncovering layers of complexity that most people never consider. It wasn't a tangible commodity. Unlike gold or silver, which have intrinsic value, modern money is based on trust and belief. Money was a social construct, a system of agreements and beliefs. This realization was groundbreaking. It meant that the power of money lay not in its physical form, but in the collective trust of the people who used it. It challenged the very foundations of traditional economic thinking. Economists had long treated money as a neutral medium of exchange, but Kennedy's insights suggested otherwise. Kennedy saw how this illusion of money was used to manipulate and control people. The financial system, she argued, was designed to benefit those who understood its intricacies and could exploit them. It kept them trapped in a cycle of debt and dependency. High interest rates and inflation eroded their savings, making it difficult for ordinary people to get ahead. She argued that the current monetary system was not designed to serve the needs of the many. Instead, it perpetuated inequality and concentrated wealth in the hands of a few. It was designed to benefit the few who controlled its creation and distribution. These individuals and institutions had the power to influence economic policies and shape the financial landscape to their advantage. Kennedy exposed how central banks, through their power to create money, held disproportionate influence over the economy. They could control the money supply, set interest rates, and dictate the terms of economic growth. This influence, she argued, was often used to favor the interests of the wealthy and powerful. Policies were crafted to ensure that the rich got richer, while the poor struggled to make ends meet. Kennedy's work challenged the prevailing narrative that the financial system was too complex for ordinary people to understand. She believed that with the right education and tools, anyone could grasp the basics of how money worked. She believed that everyone had the right to understand how money worked. Financial literacy was not just for economists and bankers, it was a fundamental skill for all citizens. More importantly, she believed that everyone had the power to demand a fairer system. By understanding the flaws in the current system, people could advocate for changes that would benefit society as a whole. Kennedy's message resonated with people around the world. Her ideas transcended borders and cultures, uniting individuals in a common cause for economic justice. They were tired of feeling powerless in the face of a system that seemed rigged against them. The growing discontent fueled movements for change and inspired new ways of thinking about money and finance. Her groundbreaking book, Interest and Inflation, Free Money, published in 1987, became a seminal work in the field of alternative economics. It laid out her vision for a financial system that served everyone, not just the elite. It was translated into numerous languages. This widespread dissemination helped her ideas reach a global audience, sparking discussions and debates in academic and activist circles alike. The book challenged conventional economic thinking, it questioned the assumptions that underpinned mainstream economics and offered radical alternatives. It offered a compelling vision for a more just and sustainable financial system. Kennedy's proposals included interest-free money and local currencies which aimed to create more resilient and equitable economies. Kennedy's work inspired countless individuals to question the status quo. Her ideas gave people the courage to imagine a different kind of economy one that prioritized human well-being over profit. It empowered them to seek out alternatives to the system of interest. From grassroots movements to policy advocacy, Kennedy's legacy lives on in the ongoing struggle for economic justice and sustainability.